Good evening. Welcome to our Facebook Live from the Methodist Church in Visalia. Tonight's service is our Good Friday Tenebrae service. Let me explain what you are seeing on your screens. You see a variety of candles, different sizes, different colors, and they form a cross leading up to the Christ candle at the top of the cross. The candles uh, that make up the cross represent the various people and uh, folks in the crowd as well as the disciples and some of the authorities that surrounded Jesus during his passion. As we go through the Tenebrae service, we will slowly extinguish the candles and each time a candle is extinguished, it represents the falling away of a friend or a follower of Jesus until at the last, only the Christ candle itself is still lit. I'm sure that it's easy to understand the symbolism of uh, what we are doing. I would invite you as you watch and listen to this service to also open up your heart and, and ask the fundamental question, at what point have you stopped following Jesus the way that you have promised? At what point in your life or points in your life have you also fallen away? Tonight is the night that we celebrate the actual payment of the price for our sins and the times that we've fallen away from our covenant with God. So it can be a powerful reminder of what was given to us by Jesus on the cross. I'm going to begin reading tonight by reading to you from the book of Isaiah, The Suffering Servant. Now remember, this is written long before the time of Jesus, and I am convinced that Isaiah saw a vision of what was to come and here is how he related what the Christ would be like. Isaiah 52, beginning with 13. Behold, my servant shall act wisely. He shall be high and lifted up, and he shall be exalted. As many were astonished at you, his appearance was so marred beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of the children of mankind. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which has not been told them, they will see. And that which they have not heard, they will understand. Who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. Tenebrae means darkness or shadows. As we come to the end of this Lenten season, <clears throat> we begin a journey into darkness to a place of deep shadows. Today we accompany Jesus in his last hours. We witness the cruelties and the suffering he endures. We listen to the words of condemnation and ridicule. In all of this, he is innocent. He is the faithful servant of God, doing his Father's work, atoning for the sins of his people, ushering in the full work of the Holy Spirit, and bringing the gospel of love, peace, and hope. And so in this liturgy, we are invited to walk solemnly and attentively with Jesus, better to know better to understand, better to be his disciple and his witness. My friends, be still and know that as we travel together, God is with us. Let's pray before we have our first reading. Father, we ask that you would bless each one participating in this worship service by touching them with your Holy Spirit. Open their hearts to your will and to what you have in mind for them to learn or to discern or even to let go of this evening. Bless us in the name of and in the spirit of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our first reading. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Where will you have us prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your home with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. 
When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve, and as they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorrowful, and began to say to him one after another, Is it I, Lord? He answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who would betray him, answered, Is it I, Rabbi? And Jesus said to him, You have said so. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Second reading. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. And he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and he prayed, saying, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but flesh is weak. Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed. My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, then your will be done. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words again. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Sleep and take your rest. See, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. My betrayer is at hand. Third reading. While he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a great crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The, the one I kiss is the man, seize him. And he came up to Jesus at once and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and he kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you came to do. Then they came up and laid hands on Jesus and seized him. And behold, one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck the servant of a high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father? And he would at once send me more than twelve legions of angels, but how then should the scriptures be fulfilled that it must be so? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as a, against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. This has taken place that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. And then all the disciples left him and fled. Thank you. 
fourth reading. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and with the whole council. And they bound Jesus and led him away, delivering him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered, You have said so. And the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate again asked him, Have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Fifth reading. And the soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole battalion. They clothed him in a purple cloak, and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on him. And then they began to salute him Hail, King of the Jews! And they were striking his head with a reed and spitting on him, and kneeling down in homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. And they led him out to crucify him. Sixth reading. They compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. And they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his garments amongst them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. It was the third hour when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes mocked him to one another, saying, He saved others, but he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we might see, and then we will believe. Those who were crucified with him also reviled him. Seventh and final reading. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders hearing it said, This man is calling Elijah. 
And one of them ran at once and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed, giving it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let's see whether Elijah will come to save him. And then Jesus cried out again with a loud voice, and he breathed his last. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, as hard as it is to remember the suffering of your Son and our Savior, we do remember tonight, and we are thankful for his passionate love that drove him to suffer on our behalf. We ask that you would accept the prayers of those who are a part of this worship service all around the world, that you would indeed forgive our sins, refresh us and make us new in the hours to come so that on Easter Sunday we might rise with your Son to a new way of life. In the darkness and in the light, all we know that is good is you, and we give thanks for that. Amen.